Welcome to H1 by Night, episode seven, our last episode of Arc Two. Meet us after the break for going crit RPG announcements. And as a reminder, we still have a tip menu. Uh, Five dollars is a rouser roll. Ten dollars is a feeding opportunity, and twenty dollars is a flashback, allowing our to rewrite history. Our content warnings for the show can be found by the Twitch command exclamation point CW. Uh, before we get into all of the technical story things, uh, my name is Josephine. I'm at Scary Dog Friend, and I will be your storyteller for today. Passing it over to Youngles. Hi, I'm Youngles. I do things across the internet, play Wendy, and I'm going to pass it to. Hello, everybody. My name is Humna. I use any and all pronouns. Uh, and today I will be playing Cerise Shaheen, who uses they, them pronouns. Uh, and I will pass it over to Jay. Hi, everyone. My name is Jay. I use they, them pronouns. And today I'm playing Viridian Song, who uses they, she pronouns. And last but not least is Fabs. Hi, uh, I'm Fabs. Uh, rockets and pens. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. Uh, I'm playing Jet today. Sure. Okay. Let's get into our recap. We flashed back to the 80s, where Wendy, our current private investigator, smuggled Korean immigrants back into Massachusetts under a fake marriage with a 40-year-old, 40-year-younger Ted Beaver. Alongside this memory is Maria, known to be dead in our present day, but previously a repentant Christian and Wendy's girlfriend. Another surprise visit to Zhang Eri becomes the senior invest inspector's last visit to anyone as Cerise hunts her down and kills her. Haunting hunt it was. Another anonymous texter notifies Viridian and Calliope that something is happening to Cerise. In Viridian's voice, the beast of Cerise's mind purrs at them to continue until the real Viridian finally says that they love Cerise. After diablerizing Kevin, Jet sits outside on a balcony, surprised to find himself not dead when the sun rises and able to walk around during the day. He surprises his tattoo artist roommate, Jesse. She asks him if this life is worth it. Jet assures her that he'll be able to take care of both of them very soon. Rie Hino caused Jet to let him know not to let Cerise take the deal with her father. Maria is alive. And Ted knew. The party finally comes together, this time at Wendy's underground apartment with the suitcase Eddie left behind with presumably all or most of the information about Alan's disappearance. A salt shaker gets possessed before Cerise reads the words, Second Inquisition. Before we hop into where we left off last episode, sometime during the day, at the Yongsan Garrison Post Exchange storage room, an older man looks around with a clipboard, bored, slightly tense, slightly jerking around at every sound, every sort of noise that happens. And then he is abruptly surprised by a younger man who taps him on the shoulder. Jesus. The younger man says, Ted, it's okay, it's just me. Ted Beaver moves his shoulder around as if to shake off the feeling of that person touching him. Can I help you with something? The other man says, uh, I just wanted to show you this crazy box that we just got. Like, I, I, I don't know how it ended up with our shit, but, uh, you know, some of our people are kind of appraisers for this kind of thing. So I, did you want to come check this out? Ted rolls his eyes, looks at his phone, presses a Bluetooth piece in his ear, 
clears his throat, uncomfortable. <sighs> yeah, sure. What? What is it? The both of them walk deeper into the storage, this warehouse, this place for certain brands being donated over from America onto this American military base. A box is cut open gingerly, painstakingly. Ted has to nudge the younger man. Hurry it up. If this if this is so important, blah, blah, blah. And in a bath of packing peanuts, in a gloriously put together case, the violin. Going back to our scene where we left our vampires, the last thing Cerise reads is Second Inquisition. The salt shaker unmoving for now. Second Inquisition. I don't understand what that is. Uh... It's bad news. And Viridian's going to reach for the, the paper. Sirius hands, hands it over to you. Bad uh, news in what way? Viridian's going to skim the, the news article. What does it say specifically? I'd like to take my vampire's direction over to our chat. We have a little bit of oh reading. Oh my gosh. Reading? With my eyes? Okay. Uh. <laughs> a collection of newspaper articles and what seems to be transmissions now lies in your hands, Viridian. What would you like to read? Um. I guess I can't read. Where does it say Second Inquisition on this? <laughs> I want to read, read that part. <laughs> start from anywhere, honestly, um, but you can get into classification top secret first, if you'd like. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll read that. I can read it out loud. Is that what you want me to do? I will read yeah. it out loud. Uh, classification top secret from CSR to HSH. Subject, differential summary. Claim one, direct sunlight harmful, statistical significance, uh, a why, which I can assume means yes. Comments, confirmed in all tested specimens, rate variable, but always fatal. Dot, dot, dot. And the chart trails off to an entire list of what presumably gets rid of vampires. Do you, read you have this an entire chart. Time? Sorry? Sorry, continue, Joe. It's an entire chart. You have now an entire sort of database of all these things. Okay. My question was, um, does Viridian read this out loud? Um, I think at first they, they, sk they skim it uh, just to herself. Um... But then the question that Cerise had asked about the Second Inquisition comes back into Viridian's mind, and um, she will just like turn the paper around just in front of them and just points to that sort of chart and says, <clears throat> The Second Inquisition is a group of people in the government who specifically are trained to kill us. And evidently, as in, they are here. As in, like... Vampires. Oh, that us. Supernatural creatures. Oh. No, that can't be right. That... If these... If these initials are correct, that's... That's... Han Sunghyun, H-S-H. And that's... Chosera. CSR. 
That's the chief superintendent general. These are the cops. Here in Itaewon. The second inquisition is rooted in government. And Viridian no, some counts in. Ethan didn't know. Well, evidently he did. Um, and I'm assuming this is a newspaper. Viridian's going to take off that one page and sort of hand it back to Cerise. And Viridian's going to keep reading to, seeing, uh, to see if um, anything else in here is um, of use. And I think when I look and see the words immortal conspiracy and first light, um, if Viridian could go paler than she already is, that is sort of her expression. Um, and Viridian will read those words out loud. First light is the second inquisition. That's what they're called. Oh. Viridian. Finish. Uh, um, I just pull out the, the communications between HSH and CSR, where HSH says, I'm not committed to this. I don't even believe this. And then CSR says, sorry, C, yeah, CSR says, we can keep discussing this. You need to get out of the public eye. You're the perfect candidate. HSH says, I believe in them. CSR says, that's the problem. We'll have a benefactor. You and your family will be taken care of. HSH says, I won't be helping anyone. This is experimental, if anything. And then CSR says, I can show you. It'll be worth it. And then HSH says, what? And Viridian will pass that to Cerise as well. Viridian, can you give me an intelligence plus politics or leadership? I choose leadership. <laughs> Difficulty three. Okay. I got two successes. Um, okay. How uh, how does willpower work? I can spend a willpower to re-roll. Three up to three. So, okay. up, uh, yeah. Cool. Then I will do non-blood die. Yeah, I'm at hunger zero, so I don't have blood die. All right, I will. I would like to do that, please. Absolutely. Yeah, get one more success. Oh, there we go. Okay, that was two more, so that's a total of four. There's an important distinction to be made about First Light. Specifically, First Light is an American faction of the Second Inquisition or mm -hmm. the Second Inquisition Coalition. Um, then Verdian will say that specifically. Um, First Light is the Americans. He's, uh, Cerise is like reading through the papers that you had passed them, the ones that had the correspondences between HSH and CSR, and assuming that they are correct about who these messages are going between, Cerise furrows their brow and like still reading over it as if they aren't believing what they're reading. This makes it sound like Ethan didn't actually go missing. This makes it sound like he's in hiding, undercover, or something. I mean, that would explain why nobody was looking for him. Um, A cop so uh, in such good standing, somebody with such a high position, and nobody, nobody looked. Sorry to interrupt this. I don't know no, what this is, not but um. Who's Ethan? And what do you... Um, 
Britain, you don't look so good. What's going on? The Second Inquisition, when I was back stateside, they are bad news. They are specifically trained to hunt us down and terminate us. They are dangerous. And that is why we have the masquerade. These traditions, whether or not you agree with them or not, they were put in place by the Camarilla to protect beings like us from being detected and hunted down. That's all fine and dandy, but who is this Ethan, and what does he have to do with us now? That's, that's what I'd like to know. And Viridian turns to Cerise and looks at them. I still... This doesn't make sense. Ethan Songhyun was just a cop. Just some guy that I... Well, before I met you, suddenly. He was just another Mark. Just someone that when I was... I needed information for a case. He was up and coming in the... In the precinct, he was gonna get a promotion soon. I knew that. I knew everybody loved him. And he was so... pliable. Easy to get information out of, so... Easy mark. But this was before... Before I turned. And I... Let him go, obviously. But you're looking for him now. He went missing a while ago. And I just wanted to know where he was. And it's very weird because nobody, none of the other cops. Eddie, is that his name? The woman that you found the me one with. That you killed? Yeah. Yes. Excuse me, killed? What? We can talk about that afterwards, but the senior inspector, um, well, uh, I was talking to her. I was trying to get her to look into Ethan's disappearance because, well, they were friends. She she loved him. She clearly loved him. And yet somehow she wasn't even looking. At least not officially. Clearly she was, I guess, looking, but not officially. None of them were looking officially. They didn't care. And that's... We all know the cops don't work like that. If anything remotely goes wrong with one of them, they raise hell about it. Definitely not of their own, no. Perhaps I always thought it was weird. Know. Perhaps they did know. Look at this conversation. And I gesture towards the paper that Cerise is holding now, too. I don't know well, how they would have found out. Well, this is a problem not only for us, but also for everyone like us. Um, hmm. Okay, there's just too many things compounding right now. First off, Wendy's house is haunted, and I look around. Then we have this exorcism we need to do. There's, there's fey presences... This is, this sounds like a community issue, and I don't know whether or not we should go to the families about this. Well, the Fae aren't really bothering us, so I don't know if that's really a problem, but. I so think it... Yes. What else is in there? Uh, Viridian flips through the last couple things. Um, it looks like Hang Sang Yun was declared missing. And, and Viridian will pass that headline that says, Have you seen me? And I'm assuming there's a picture of, of him. Um, last seen at Ita One Precinct after shift end. Uh, so I pass that to, uh, Cerise. Um, 
and then there's more headlines, and Vernon will read these all out loud. Sightings of men at night near abandoned buildings stay cautious. Unidentified man walking on highway. Unidentified noises in abandoned building. Stay cautious. Keep children away at these times. And I'll sort of like pass that around. We're doing show and tell right now. Um, oh, missing senior inspector succeeded by new Zhang Eri. Zhang made a statement while holding on to Song Hyun, Han Song Hyun's tearful mother. Quote, I'm thankful for the opportunity, but saddened it came under these circumstances. If anyone can find Song Hyun, please call. We miss him very much. He was a good boy and worked very hard. End quote. And Viridian punctuates and is, that by, like, tapping the paper. There is a picture of Eddie, as you remember her, holding on to just like an arm wrapped around um, uh, an older maternal figure with some of the features of Song Hyun. Is there any indication which neighborhood these buildings or this highway that these supposedly unidentified people have been seen at? Yes. Uh, so which, let me know which one you're looking at in particular. Let's go with the unidentified man walking on a highway. Okie dokie. This would be the highway on the way actually to Viridians. So a little bit, it's away from E21. Okay. It um, is there like a specified address on the abandoned building with the unidentified noises? Yes. It is. Let's see. Even a general ballpark of where it is, if if we might know the area. It is. It's near the antique shop. It so it's like a drive down the highway and just kind of near more strange construction right sort of area. And then what about the other abandoned buildings where there were sightings of men at night? This is a location that you are not entirely sure of. They're on more of the outskirts of Itaewon, closer into Seoul, just generally. Wouldn't know where these were in particular. Um, Viridian. I think if you look over it, and I don't, I'm not gonna, I won't make you make a rule for this, but I think you could identify this as the general area. Mm. Depending on more specific information, the general area where that pastor who you took hostage, where he mm -hmm. said where one of the Ouroboros churches were. Mm -hmm. Is what? Uh, sightings of men at night near abandoned buildings. Stay cautious. Ah. That general address is what that man that you took hostage said was one of the churches. Do, do, do I know if Temperance's cult was specifically in abandoned churches? No. Um, everything seems Just to be the surrounding area. well upkept places okay. and if they were abandoned they would be like construction projects to upkeep them redo them i see uh, i think viridian will indicate that first one and just say oh this is 
this is near the cult, the church, where they, where they live. Do you think one of these buildings is where, if, if by some fucked up coincidence, Song Hyun is in fact part of this, what was it? Second Inquisition? This Second hunt Inquisition. Hunting group, which I'm, by the way, still not convinced that he would join. But if he is, and he didn't go missing, and he's in hiding to do work for them, do you think... Do you think one of these buildings, these abandoned buildings, is is their base of operations, their hideout? Very likely. One of them is near that Gumiho. I still have, and Cerise goes to their pocket and pulls out a key. I still have the key. Well, he gave me. How? Viridian, Viridian is a little bit confused because I think Viridian had the key at the end of that episode. Different key. Different key. Different key? Oh, this there's one's two. To, this one's to Key's apartment. Oh. Viridian, okay, never mind. Scratch that. Viridian looks at it. What's this for? For her apartment. The Fae. Key. Ah. If we needed to talk to uh, the Mudong again, I feel like they know something. I... Look, um... That Mudong may know something, but I think we can probably use other resources i think i think it's best that we hold that in our back pocket if we need to they're they seem just as dangerous and even more than what we have on our plate right now i agree i would like to not get tangled up in their whims and machinations if we can avoid it Oh, we need to do something. We're not going to the families and we're not going to the Fae to ask for what they know. What are we going to do? If this is... If this means that the Itaewon police has been working with the vampire hunters this whole time, I can't... I can't just walk in. I can't just do what I normally do to get information. Especially after apparently murdering one of their own... Yeah, I don't know if that was a good idea. I do it all the time. This one was just different. We we don't have to talk about that. So, you do it all the time in this group. How, how long has this group been infiltrated by the second Inquisition? Is that Inquisition. what they're called? Yes. Okay. Um... Do you think they already know where we are? Do you think they're after us? I have no oh. reason to suspect they could identify us at this moment, but the SI has tools and training to identify and rat us out. One thing that I did realize... Bad. Um... It shows your weaknesses. What does? The list. Oh. Some does of this us. Does not apply to you? Not all of it. And not only to me. What do you mean? <laughs> us orphans can actually go out. We, I look more alive than the most of you. I can actually consume food. I, the upshot is they don't know about orphans, about the other half. 
And I think Ellie we can Hill. use uh, this is true, but I think that we can use that with, to our advantage. Do you have a plan? Uh, I, all I can do is put my feelers out and make sure that we know what's coming before it does. I hate to say it. If this is all real, I think they know who I am. I think we have to operate under that assumption. I think that's probably a good assumption. Well, and if they know who Cerise is, we're not too far removed from that. No. Especially not you, Satang Nim. Well, Viridian, uh, oh, no, nope, go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, Viridian uh, is doing her best to not appear like freaked out and scared. Um, and I'm willing to make a composure, whatever role to, <laughs> to see if how, how good I am at that. Um, Joe, if you'd like, what would that be composure and uh, performance uh, or subterfuge for lying? Either one, yeah. Okay, I'll do that. Luckily, I am good at that, but I, I'm just curious. And if anybody I wants to see through Viridian, that, that will be your wits plus awareness or anything else you Insight, think, I think would is... be helpful. Insight, yeah. Can I get an extra die for being gay? Yes. Amazing. <laughs> um... I got four successes. I only got one. <laughs> Well, Wendy got three. I, got th I was going to say, did I get three? I don't. I, I am not trying to suss out. Word. Meridian looks calm. Um, And I think uh, Viridian is able to suppress most of their tells. Uh, and she just says um we need to make a plan and i think perhaps this murder the original one and Viridian says that looking at series <laughs> the one that we are trying to solve might bring answers at least we can close that chapter before we do this but it might help us if we can track down where your ethan han went because i think you're right i don't think he's dead i think he's working with the si we find him we find the SI. I think it's, um, I, I agree. I think it's imperative that we solve whatever this case is, because honestly, I think the only reason why they're here is because of these killings. The less killings that happen, the less heat that we get, the easier we are to throw them, it, the easier it would be to throw them off our scent. I... This is a wild idea, but I'm just going to say it. What if the SI is behind that killing? <sighs> I mean, oh, we like, found... Like, wear us out? Yeah. I mean, we found that blood brute, right? Infused into the body. It was a trap. Yeah, but 
it it seems like it was done by somebody like like one of my people like one of what some of the people that are capable of alchemy so if if the si planted the root on the body and then some random lick walks by and sanguinates them my question is does this second inquisition have our own working against us? I don't see why not. Why would you have somebody desperate enough? It. Tell them that you're not going to you're going to spare them. You won't kill them specifically. Especially Fair. someone really green. True. Um, can I make um or is it, it if this is based off of like my previous role about investigating the the blood root? Do I know the level of expertise you need in alchemy to be able to do this? Or can like can like I, a greenie can do this, yeah. Um unless it's a really lucky new vampire gets into any community or any kind of contact with the fae whatsoever would that only would that ever be possible otherwise the fae do not be involved and have never want to be wanted to be involved it's also assumed uh, based on like the conversations we had with key um in the gumiho uh that the blood root was stolen correct is what they were like kind of implying or i could be wrong they were I, they i believe they were more so implying that they had possible contact with fairies and i could just be misremembering also personally but we'll just say that if there was someone who had connection to the fairies that is a possibility if there is someone who was able to synthesize such a thing outside of the fairies knowing is also possible but the fairies do believe that it was specifically planted to fuck with vampires and they make it to fuck with vampires and the the weaknesses that were listed on the paper earlier were they specifically weaknesses for vampires or are other supernatural creatures listed down there as well? Only vampires and you are right, like very specifically, it had there's are no other conditions for what seemingly uh those with quote unquote thin blood or otherwise exceptions. Okay. Um you know, yeah, that would make sense if, out of desperation, one of them lucked out and was able to synth synthesize something like this. Mm, I don't know whether or not I can muster enough people to figure that out. Um, I took care of one already, unfortunately. What do you mean? You mean take care of it it was it's complicated she but someone soon. look uh, what matters is he was the only one known to be peddling whatever this this thing that turns people's organs into these things so did you did at you least get information out of him did you think to ask where he might have gotten it? Well, he didn't really know. How do you not know where you get? He gets he gets his supply. He doesn't know where it comes from. So. So it just shows up at his doorstep, and he sells it. He uh. Sold it. Out of character, Joe, that was kind of like what Kevin implied, right? Very 
much so he had essentially what seemed to be like Nicorette kind of patches right so he didn't know nor did he really particularly make anything mm-hmm. new like he either like Frankenstein something and they were literally just like Listerine tab like Nicorette patches um or it's very possible he was given something. But like, how, like, how, like, do they just show up at his door and he just like, like a drop off location? Like, Jet has no idea. Yeah. The only thing I do know is if this person really wants to make money or really wants to suss this out, it's going to, it's going to resurface. But the thing is, people will tell me at this point what, where it's coming from, who they got it from. Can we maybe intercept one of these drop-offs? Not not before we find out who's going to be dropped off to first. Could it be you? Could you somehow show an interest? I don't know if they would like a huge competitor of theirs to have access to this. So um out of character is there anybody that I can think of that might be able to accept some of this or like do I have any known like affiliates of Kevin? like vampire specific or anyone yeah vampire specific or even anyone actually Kian comes to mind okay not gonna put that kid's life in danger um come on 19 year old kid no big, <laughs> love big drugs big drug money <laughs> uh drugs <laughs> I can think of somebody who can probably be a front for it, but I don't want to. Why not? This you said yourself. This is a community issue. Yeah, but it's this kind of is important. this is not a person that is one of us. This we'll is... protect them. Let me think about it. Let me let me talk to the kid and let me think about it. We don't have that kind of time, but fuck. Wendy? Can you yeah. roll wits plus resolve for me? Sure. Three. You got one success. Oh, wow. One success. Yeah. We're going to add your aspects to that. So two successes, no problem. Okay. There is a familiar feeling that kind of just shoots through your shoulders or in whatever area your body experiences alertness or hypervigilance. Someone with a familiar gait is walking towards the little entrance to your underground apartment. Military boots. Ah, oh, fuck. Um, I think you guys need to go now. Go where? Or hide. Why? Uh, What's because happening? somebody is coming and it might be Ted. It might not be Ted. But Viridian especially probably should not be visible or present. What do you mean? Well, Green's already standing up. The military kind of has a file on you. <laughs> so. I don't know if he knows what you look like. I just, you know. 
Wendy, I don't know. Exits out of Wendy's apartment. Before that, you hear a tired man's voice. Wendy, I don't know if you're home. I don't know if by this point I should be looking for you somewhere else. I'm just... I just, I'm going to finally drop off the MP3 player. And then, uh, for Viridian, there seems to, there, I think, Wendy, there's like a back entrance. Okay. That leads to like, you know, somewhere. The back, the backer alley. (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) Viridian's going to stand and just take Wendy by the shoulders. And, um, her grip is, is firm but not enough to, like, hurt you. And Viridian just looks at you and just says, you're not home right now. Let him walk away. Um, And then Viridian pauses and just looks at everyone. If anyone wants to come with me, you can. Why don't we regroup at my place? And they are going to take their jacket and they are going to walk out. (laughs) Viridian's been, like, waiting for an excuse to leave Wendy's apartment. (laughs) Uh, but you walk out which way? The back. <laughs> the back, okay. Yeah. And I'm calling, um, I think actually this whole time, Viridian's already called, um, called yeah. the car. Uh, Cerise, Wendy, what's happening? Cerise is, uh, not gonna leave Wendy alone in a haunted apartment. That seems like a bad idea. Uh, so Cerise is, like, looks at Viridian, just kind of, like, mouths, sorry, and, uh, does not follow, and instead is gonna, first thing that they can think of, go underneath the bed, uh, is gonna hide underneath the bed. I think, uh, looking, uh, with enough visual to, like, be able to keep an eye on Wendy, uh, throughout this whole thing, but they're gonna hide. When... When you lock eyes with Viridian as Viridian's leaving, I think Viridian, um, in Korean sign, sign language, will just sign to you, stay safe, as I walk out. Jet's probably going to follow Viridian. Okay. Wendy? Wendy is going to be frozen in uh, awe that Viridian was that close to her. Um, and is just like... Oh, okay, and then like see Cerise hide under the bed and kind of just like ducks behind the door and like tries not to make any sounds while Ted is on the other side. Okay. Cerise and Wendy. Please give me a dexterity stealth. <laughs> okay. Fingers crossed. Use your willpower. <laughs> I might have to. Yeah, how does using willpower okay. work again? You just you re-roll? Can... Yeah, you fill in a dot and you can roll up to three non-hunger dice to try to get successes yep. from them. Alright, I'm gonna re-roll two of them. I don't know what that means. Is that a good thing? You got two successes? Yes. I got three total. Three successes? Uh, any willpower that you want to use, Jen? Um, will that add to what I did, or just like... Yes. Basically, potentially add three more successes. Yeah, basically, whatever failures you have, you can re-roll them, as long as they're not hunger dice. Um, and you can do that up to three dice that are failures. Um... I can do two. Okay, so two. (laughs) So when it gets two successes, Ceres gets three. We'll say Jet and Viridian are on their way out. As a note, Jet, do you take the same car that Viridian does or just separate ways? No, I'm going to take my car, uh, but I'm going to follow. Okay. Cerise and Wendy in painstaking sort of silence as you wait. The boots still shuffling sort of around. 
<sighs> Wendy, I don't know if there's anything that I did. Um, it's not like you have any obligation to talk to me or anything, I, but this is the longest. I think you haven't even been home. And it's not even that you're asleep. I know that you are not here at all. <sighs> um, do you know anything about a violin? I don't know why I'm asking. A violin? <laughs> Wendy? Ted goes down the steep stairs and knocks on the door. Wendy? Are you... Was that you? Uh, Ted no, starts... No, this is not Wendy. It's the, the housekeeper. <laughs> Wendy, you can't afford a housekeeper. She can now. They hired me <laughs> just last week. Uh, please, I'm cleaning. Ted starts, you know, jiggling, shaking the, the doorknob. Wendy immediately, like, just, like, puts her body like, in front of the door so that Ted hopefully can't push the door. <laughs> I'm gonna Do you look wanna, for the nearest her, broom. <laughs> you 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 can find the broom, Wendy. Do you want to you want to do an opposed uh, strength situation between yeah. you and Ted? I okay. want yeah. I want to try to keep Ted from coming inside. <laughs> All right, Wendy, give me a. I'll let you use stamina for this as your attribute, but give me an athletics. Okay. Oh wait, 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 wait! No, oh god, my athletics is really bad. Okay, no, this will be fine. Uh, okay. <laughs> what is that? Zero successes, messy critical. <laughs> so I'm not sure what that means. No, so not extra only do you bad. fail, not only do you fail, but it goes a little extra haywire. Great. Um, Ted, you knew, was an American soldier in the 80s mm -hmm. uh, with strong shoulder and an understanding of perhaps multiple doors he's had to hammer through. Um, he just says, if you're in there, I'm sorry, Wendy. And then he barges, breaking the door handle and door hinge right off. He hooks, not even like, um, not even necessarily pushing you to the ground or like pushing you to the wall or anything like that. With a surprising force of your own, you're sort of able to make sure that you're not gonna, you don't get hurt or the door doesn't splinter in any sort of way. But unfortunately, Ted is inside your home. Right. I'm Ted's cleaning, face. I told you. <laughs> This always has the broom and his like fake sweeping the floor. In <laughs> a very fancy outfit. Yeah, and we're like pantsuit and the whole deal. <laughs> Ted puts the door against the wall. Who are you? Where is Wendy? I, t I told you I am the housekeeper and Wendy's not home. I'm just hiding behind the door, the other side of the door, just like... Ted puts his hand on his waist. A young man, what are you reaching for? 
I'm pretty sure this guy's older than me, but it's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and we'll just do a very quick. What are you gonna do? Guy, come on, don't <laughs> shoot that guy. Ted literally just turns his head and sees Wendy behind the door. Okay, cool. It, Wendy, what the fuck is going on? And then he he just kind of like, who is this? What's the uh, Wendy? Where have you been? Door down and is like, I got a housekeeper and I didn't want you to know because you know you might think different of me if you think I make more money or something. Wendy, you don't have money. How are you paying for this such this incredibly beautiful housekeeper? Um, oh, that's very kind of you. I don't stop. know if that's anything you have that to stop. you really want to know about, Ted. Uh, but I've had information for you for days. Oh, really? Info? Sweet. Let's go. What info? No. We are we. I'm, I just have to walk past this? Are you serious? Well, I mean, kind of like I just have to walk past the fact that you gave a certain somebody my phone number without telling me that they weren't dead and that they're kind of still alive and that they um, came to you and asked you for my number, maybe. Maybe. Maybe that happened. I didn't fucking think that she would do that so soon. So soon Listen. being the key words in that sentence right there. So, and now you broke my door. That's great. Now I definitely need money to fix the door. I will fix your door. I can, I can do that. Okay. Is this person points at putting at race? Is this person fine to know your shit? Like, is this? Yeah. No. Totally. We're. I met her on the that internet housekeeping network. Thing, but we've been really close the past couple days. <laughs> I feel like it's okay. a conversation that I, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> and Suri's puts the broom down. Uh, you, you know what? I can't. I can't do that anymore. Um, hi, Ted. Not sure if you recognize me. Uh, we talked on the phone. I'm Cerise. <laughs> <laughs> and they will hold out the their hand. The defense attorney. Wendy. Yeah. What? What? Are Are you? Did you get a lawyer? Yes. We're friends. <laughs> okay, everybody. <laughs> a um, lawyer if you, if you are you, if you want to sincerely go through with that, give me a manipulation plus subterfuge, Wendy. Is this a lie? Is this a lie? <laughs> are we not friends? That's not the lie. Or if you... <laughs> Can I use an extra dice because she has a thingy in bullshitting? Sure. Absolutely. Can I give, can I give Wendy my pretty dice? No. Oh, <laughs> I got another Okay. Recipe. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Wendy needs to stop rolling. <laughs> it's going so well. And I'm not there to do anything. <laughs> Ted looks at you. He believes. You see sort of like this. He, This acknowledge. Okay, you can get a lawyer. This person. Like he, there is an acknowledgement of who you are, Cerise. Things are sort of clicking in his mind. Wendy, is there a certain way that you convey this information that comes off kind of feral or comes off in way bigger of God. grandeur than you intend it for intend for it to be? So I imagine Wendy just has a freak out moment and just starts spouting off all the reasons that she would potentially need a lawyer, including but not limited to smuggling everybody back into the Americas back when we were back in the day. And now you never know when things are going to come, you know, back to haunt you from when you do things like that. And apparently there's a whole ring going around in, with, you know, the murder thing that happened and she just goes on this like getting like her voice like increasing 
in tone with every single sentence to the point where she just like yeah okay 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 wendy that makes sense you can tell it makes him nervous but he doesn't say that okay um yes i'm sorry maria she's alive and she came to me not too long ago either. Uh, she was covered in dirt. And just somehow, I don't know, she, she just walked up to my off-base, my off-base residence. Just the most haunted I've ever seen her. But when she left, she was so young and she stayed young. And I just couldn't, I mean, what that only it takes you from one mind place to the other. I couldn't believe it. When you asked me to look up information about Revival or Ouroboros, I found, I found Maria's file. And I also found Enoch, that other guy. Hmm. Wait, are those the two that came after you? Yeah. Enoch's dead. He... Uh... I believe that I had... I didn't know. Uh, Ted had a kind of, um, unfurls a... kind of a Manila... Manila sort of uh envelope not it's not manila but it's like sort of the packaged envelope and puts it on the table um cerise do you still have the briefcase i imagine so yeah okay uh takes out two files and also takes out an mp3 player um one is maria and it is a file from, it is information from the 80s. It has her last name. It seems to have the clan with which the orphanage associated her with. And Enoch, whose name is Masa Wakabe, a Japanese name. And Ted begins to sort of move things around in Enoch's file and he points at something and in very so small font in this transmission, this communication, Enoch uh, wasn't in the cult for any, any particular religious reason. He was in to keep an eye on our friend, your friend, and uh, the Hino family employed Enoch. I what? Enoch was a part of the Hino clan. He was long haul in the revival cult. I and thought now he's the dead. Hinos... I thought the Hinos were a friend of Jet's. Why would they be secretly keeping an eye on him? I mean, I don't know. Uh, is there one person, is there a couple people in particular that 
have their allegiances with Jet over others or something. I don't know, but... Supposedly he doesn't like the father. From These are... It's a weird move. It's a weird move. They haven't done anything as far as... I mean, uh, sure, the, some people have gone to jail for embezzling white-collar shit on behalf of the Hino clan. Right. But this is a, di a completely different kind of jail. This is a... This is a long con of such an immense proportion. I don't know. I don't know what that all means. But Enoch's dead. Maria's alive somehow. She... The last thing she said before she left, I mean, she got cleaned up. She has new clothes and everything. The last thing she said to me was she was making sure of things before I guess it's safe for her to meet up with you again. Cover her tracks, make sure that the revival can't find her. I don't know, but... Is it possible they were scapegoated when he says to Cerise, kind of like half ignoring now that Ted is even existing in the same plane as them? Um, possible. Uh, I think in order to understand why the Hinos may have a particular interest in revival, we need to talk to Jet. We need yeah. to get this information to him. And also, uh, as Cerise walks over to the table where the salt shaker is and kind of goes to pick it up, hesitates for a second and picks it up. We need to you find out the, the salt shaker wrong with your... in the briefcase. And there's sort of salt now all over all of the papers that you have. Okay, well, that is a very expensive briefcase, first of all. So, um, whoever is doing this, if you could not, that would be great. Uh, second of all, what the fuck, Wendy? How long have you been haunted? I mean, it's not like I spend too much time here, but maybe we should, um, we should go to that, that food date thing we were going to go to that we should go to um right yes that thing we had uh, planned mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh yeah you see satanim uh planned it and sh they would be so disappointed if we were late you know so disappointed absolutely absolutely so ted maybe we should fix my door another time um that would be that would be great and I've been really good, you know, thanks for the information, thanks for the mp3 player, oh my god, this is gonna make my life so much easier, and she picks that up and, like, kind of puts it in their pocket, and, um, I guess you can just, you know, help yourself to snacks in the fridge or whatever, but we have to, we have to go. Cerise, before we leave, will hand Ted their business card, in case you need to in case you need a lawyer for some reason. Oh, and also, uh, and they will go to the ground, pick up the broom that they had been sweeping with and give that to Ted's other hand. I didn't get to finish. I'll see you one day. Okay, hey, bye. And I like grab the files on the table and like grab them and I walk out the door and then leave. with much information and evidence. Let's take a break. We'll see you in 10 or so minutes. Come back for going credit RPG announcements and special E to one by night announcements as well. See you soon. Hello, welcome back from the break. Uh, getting us into some exciting new announcements for going crit RPG. Casting calls are opening this week for four of our guest GM spots. Only three. <laughs> Even, only three now. Uh, keep an eye on the Going Crit RPG Twitter uh, for each one by night news. 
we'll be breaking this um we'll be breaking january 31st we're meeting still next week and the date of our season one finale will be february 7th for season two we will be moving over very excitingly to bad house rpg for fabian's greater world of darkness series darkness eternal so expect to see not only E2M by Night season two, starting sometime in March, Ashes of New Amsterdam, a Mage the Ascension story, also in March, and The Lion's Den, a Vampire the Masquerade Toronto setting, starting sometime in April. So lots of very exciting news. Make sure to go over to Bad House RPG Twitter for more exciting information about staff and new stories. So, getting right back into our story, Jet and Viridian, you are scattering at the moment. Before either of you head back to Viridian's or before any sort of converging happens, what are the both of you doing? Is it just a straight shot to Viridian's or are there certain stops or calls that are needing to happen? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just like heavily pondering about like when they mentioned like using Ken, um, and then I realized we don't have to use Ken. We have somebody mysterious and probably off the grid that might be able to help us, at least me, if they're not mad at me. Um, so, um, I'm probably going to bring it up as soon as we do our meeting. Um, okay. I'd call them, but they can't use a phone. Um, <laughs> uh, I believe they've, I believe she's used a phone once before, but that's not a regular yeah. thing. Okie dokie. Is that all for Jet? Uh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call, actually, no. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay. Verdian, you were being driven by kind of a very handsome, uh, not a new driver, but one of the drivers that you have, whose name is Noor. Uh, I just wanted to say that he was handsome, I guess, but... Uh, is there anything that you were doing as you are driving uh, back to your place? I think Verdian uh, shoots just a quick text off to Debbie. Uh, mm -hmm. And also um, my other contacts um, who are my good friends, whose names I am blanking on real quick, uh, Sagwa and Kyoko. Um, mm -hmm. I think Viridian is just going to shoot them all a quick text, something along the lines of just something is going down. Um, basically, watch your backs and, um, you know, hypervigilance. Uh, a, a soft warning, perhaps. Uh... And I think the rest of the ride back to my haven is me on the phone with Calliope, just rapid fire <coughs> going over like a bunch of stuff. Uh, like we, Viridian talks about all the stuff that was discovered in the briefcase. Um, and it's basically just Cal and Viridian back and forth. Cal talking about stuff going on at the company, Viridian answering and just like, Blah, 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 like all the way back to my haven. <laughs> okay, okay. Wendy and Cerise, are you heading over to the haven together? I think so, or unless Wendy has there... some, somewhere else that you want to be. No, I'm sticking with you, my dear. And to the haven we're I... going. Cool. Back at the Dream Hub, all of you eventually find yourselves together in Viridian's living room once again. Uh, do you want Calliope to be there or anybody in particular, Viridian? I 
muted. Uh, uh, I think... I think... Cal is busy right now. Um, Got it. I think I've given Cal a bunch of stuff to do. I think she's she's present at my haven, but is like in in her office space in in the haven. She and Cinnabar have been very busy, covering up a lot, a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and I think Viridian just um, has taken has taken their blazer off and it's and is just sitting in their uh, white pressed blouse on the couch a little bit more dressed down than I think normally she is. Um, and I think they're still trying their best to hide it, but I think it's a little bit more clear now that Viridian is stressing out about this. Okay, um... How'd it go, Ted? Or whatever. Pretty well! I'm Wendy's uh, housekeeper. Mm -hmm. Oh. Did you discover anything useful? Um, well, actually, we discovered that, uh, whoever Maria was working with was also working for the Hino family, right? Isn't that what he said? And so now we're very confused as to what happened, because that doesn't make sense in my brain. Um... This one, in particular. Mm -hmm. And Cerise slides over Enoch's file to Jet. Um, Enoch and Maria were the two that turned the two of you, pointing at Jet and Wendy, the two of you in, to Revival. Mm -hmm. Right. About that. So, Maria contacted me. Because Maria is, in fact... Not, not deceased. Dead. So she reached out to Ted, who gave her number. Um, and so, she, yeah, I don't really know what much. Exactly, Wendy, is the relationship between you and Ted? Oh, Ted? Oh, God. Okay, so back in the day, um, I used to help people get into America, and I used to use Ted to do it. Okay, well, why is he still in your life? That's a really good question that I ask myself probably on the daily. Um, but he gives me information, and like, like how they have this really cool violin that he was talking about little bit but um Violin. so yeah Whoa. i don't know i didn't really ask well i didn't really ask much about it he just said he was just going on about some violin they had found uh and i thought it was kind of cool because violins are kind of cool and anyway so i'm wondering if there's some like maybe something that he know family's not telling us. Why would the Hino family be keeping an eye on you, Jet? I don't know. Um, I'm staring at the... Um, I'm basically staring at the um, kind of like uh, the file. I'm going to take a picture of it and I'm going to send it to Rie with a question mark. And... Um, Before, like, like even after like a few seconds after that, I'm like, "What's going on? You need to tell me right now." Um, as a message after that question mark. Rie does not respond. Uh. 
in the meantime, Viridian is going to text Calliope, even though Cal's like in the next room, but Viridian's going to text Calliope and just ask if she knows what happened to that violin that Viridian uh, is trying to source for Jet. Calliope basically says, I'll see what I can find out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and especially now that they have Cinnabar, it should maybe be easier. Mm -hmm. On top of all of that information that we got from Ted, uh, and Cerise will uh, pick up their briefcase, stand up, and go to the table, and is going to upend it and dump it all onto the table. So you see all of the like files, the papers come out. But in addition to that, a whole bunch of salt, loose salt. And then finally, right, uh, I think the like salt hmm. shaker comes out. What? Salt everywhere. That that made its way into my briefcase, all on its own. Why would you bring it into my home? Whatever this is, it wants to follow us, and I think we need to deal with that. I don't- well, I don't know about us, I think maybe it wants to follow, and Cerise will point out Wendy. You. Okay. Wherever we go for that exorcism, maybe we should also deal with this. Yeah, you're not wrong. Who gave you the salt shaker? Was it a gift? Did you buy it? Um, who did give me the salt shaker? It's not special. You oh, I brought it, it at like the discount store. Hmm. I can- I mean, we can throw it away. I can get another salt shaker. Not you really can try. attached to that one. If you choose to dispose of that, I prefer you dispose it not in here. Yeah, yeah, that's- nope, that's fine. Um... And Viridian is just, like, on the side, just- using some of these file papers to scoop the salt that's on the coffee table onto this paper. Um, and uh, Vernon looks particularly miffed that there's salt everywhere, like going into the rug under this coffee table, all over the table, like everywhere. Vernon's a little miffed about that. <laughs> if anybody wants to give me an intelligence occult about... I'm specifically targeting the salt. I'd be interested to see who gets an inkling. So you I said occult and what? Intelligence and occult. This one. Zero successes. I know nothing. Four successes <laughs> for Wendy. Just one. Just one. Yeah, you're, you're good. Wendy, although this may not be the perfect type of salt, salt in general is a means of protection. Mm-hmm. So... Wendy's not gonna say anything, but she's also gonna copy Viridian and they're gonna like scoop some salts into like their hand and kind of just like put it in their pocket in their coat. <laughs> and then take what? the salt shaker and it's like, I should probably hold on to this. This should be that might be good. And then like just like puts it in their pocket with the the salt. Viridian is just staring at you, head tilted, having watched you scoop a bunch of salt into your hand and then putting it in your pocket. Viridian thinks that is very strange and very weird. 
You're gonna keep but... that? The haunted salt shaker. Well, it could be useful. I could throw it at something. And honestly, and less, until we know what, what's up with it, someone should hold on to it, or else we might end up finding it in places we don't want salt. When right? we go to do perform the exorcism on the body, mm -hmm. perhaps we can find answers for that. And I point at it. Yeah, great. I'll just hold on to it until then, if that's okay. Unless, unless you want to hold I'm, on to it. I don't want it. I don't like the idea of you having some sort of spirit, ghost, demon, whatever, in your pocket. But as long as you're going to be okay. I mean, that's yet to be seen, isn't it? Because we have we have big matters. That we're dealing with, maybe? That might not be Speaking okay. Of being okay. Wendy, why don't you stay here until this blows over? My haven is protected very well. Security, armed guards, everything. You are safe here. Aw, Wendy's just like Oh, that's that yes. I mean, I don't wanna over Stay, my. I have many guest rooms. Don't worry. Okay, okay, good. Cause Ted broke my door. I don't even have a door anymore right now. Like I was really wondering what I was gonna do. Cause that can't be safe. And so, thank you so much. And then starts like f cleaning up the salt more aggressively for <laughs> for the end. It's like a thank you. I think like just really smoothly, Viridian just slides you the paper that she had with some salt on it and just like hands it to you because you're working on that so Freddie will just give it to you oh my god <laughs> um and uh i think Freddie just sits back up straight on the couch that they're sitting on and folds her hands in her lap and looks at jet and cerise and wendy and just says we need to make a plan and we need to make a plan now I still uh, think that the fairies are a good lead, but... You get a notification from Calliope Viridian. Check my phone. Some international cargo was intercepted from presumably that unsavory guy's lack of supervision. Wonderful. And Viridian just mutters that under their breath and looks back up at uh, Wendy. You said Ted has a violin. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't have it, but the military has it. And they found it or something. Why? A very high profile package that I was expecting has been intercepted. And I have reasons to believe it is the same one. And Viridian will look over at Jet and and just say, um, "This this was your violin. I was looking for for you." Oh oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Things just keep piling on, and I. And Wendy looks at Jet and is like, well, I think, you know what? I bet we can get it back. I bet I can get it back for you. I mean, if you can, that would help a lot for what I'm hoping to do. What's Why that? do you want a violin? I never asked. It's supposed to be a gift. Oh. Okay. That's really sweet. Yeah. I have might have upset somebody who can help us. And that would probably help smooth things over. I don't want to put my friend into the line of fire. 
but Natalie, who is an acquaintance, probably would help us out. They're not affiliated with anybody. There's no family drama. They might be able to help us. But after the last time we have spoke, I don't know how enthusiastic they would be to see me. She didn't seem too upset when I left. It's kind of weird. What do you mean? Oh, um... I have met Natalie. Why? I went over to Jet's lab, and Natalie was Why? there. Sergeant Neem, am I not allowed to visit our friends? You, you can visit who you like, but given past actions, I am wondering if you disobeyed me. Depends on your definition of disobeyed. Cerise, did you or did you not feed on Jet again? Cerise looks over at Jet. Viridian looks over at Jet. <laughs> Wendy just takes out a juice box and sits. <laughs> Jet stands as it, it doesn't really matter. No, it does. To me. I look back at Cerise. Yes, but that was before. Before. Eddie. And I met, I met Natalie while I was there. And she, the point being that she did not seem upset. Mm -hmm. She doesn't seem to be anything, really. Hard to read. I wouldn't really say okay. that we're in the clear yet. If anything, she looked amused. She... Why? Fuck if I know. Me and, me and Natalie have an agreement that they are allowed to study my blood and they are in exchange they give me protection company and even teach me certain things about us as as you know, I was wasn't really afforded a sire to guide me through all of these things. I know. All of this aside, and Brilliant's looking at Cerise, and then back at Jet. Perhaps if you were to show up with your gift. Perhaps. She might be inclined to help. One other thing. I keep thinking about these abandoned buildings where supposedly these noises and these men have been seen, heard. What if we went and looked for ourselves? Saw what was there. It's like giving me and Wendy to the cults, and that's not... You don't have to come. You two can handle the blood route. Maybe Viridian and I could go and look. Sorry. Sajang name. Maybe Sajang name and I could go. I don't know. 
Honestly, everything's really dangerous right now. Uh, everything is going to be dangerous. We can't just sit here too afraid to do anything. I agree. We need to get ahead of this. The only way to do we so still... is to know what we're up against. And we still don't know if they know who we are, and I am not about to sit around here until they connect the dots they need to connect. I have spent many years making a name for myself in these parts, and I am not about to give that up. Oh, uh, okay. Well, few things. Cerise, do you have a picture of Ethan? Yeah, actually, I do. Um, one can, second. Can you send it over? And Cerise will, I think, run upstairs really quickly to wherever they have kept the wallet that they got from Ethan's big brother when they killed him. Uh, and they pull out the like picture of Ethan from that wallet and come back and they give that to Jet. Uh, I'm going to take a picture of this photo. And can I send a mass text to people that are my customers, my dealers, bar owners that I know? <laughs> and kind of tell them if you see this guy shoot me a text I'm glad you continued the sentence I thought you were going to stop at shoot <laughs> and I was like <laughs> uh, but yeah uh, basically time. shoot me a text um, and I am Sorry. more than happy to do a roll for that sure let's see What do you want to do? I was hoping to do manipulation and leadership since I have specialty on the bar crowd, the bar scene. Sure. Go for it. Okay. So that's a crit with four, five, six, seven. Seven successes. Mm-hmm. You get a hit. One person who's around sort of the like construction, like underpass areas of the highway near the antique shop. We'll say just someone, maybe a customer or something along those lines. Yeah, I think I saw this guy in one of the love motels down here. Uh, I will send them like, I don't know, like about a uh, hundred thousand won through like the uh, messenger thing and then just send them like a kind of like a thank you. Um, and then I just show it to the group. Apparently somebody found him. Uh, Joe. I have a group of friends that are sex workers. That's uh, right. Would any, would any of them be able to corroborate this story or be able to... The particular love motel that Ethan was supposedly seen in, do, are any of my friends, like, workers there specifically? Give me a roll as well. It can be the same uh, manipulation and streetwise or whatever you would like to roll. We can I think that see. Makes that makes sense. Can I add my presence uh, dice to this or no? Sure. Okay. I assume I don't get pretty dice because... Six successes. Ooh. Six successes. Nice. One of your friends says, yeah, there's only one love motel really in that area. It hasn't been open 
in a while. It's called Habanera. Hasn't been open. Um, and I ask back uh, whether anybody has been working out of there like secretly, like even if, though it's not open, like have people just kind of been like unofficially been doing work out there or is it like abandoned? If anyone's doing work there, it's like not, it's probably drugs or something. Not really okay. anything we want to, you not know. safe. Right. Uh, can I text I, this? Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say that I thank my friend for the information, um, and I share it with the rest of the group as well. Uh, I'm going to try and text the same person and say, did you see anybody else going in and out of that love motel? And if you did, what did they look like? Foreigners? Question mark. I... The the customer responds back. I sometimes police kind of drive by and around. I try not to stick around the whole time. Cool. Thank you. Uh, so you know where Ethan might be. Now the question is, is he alone or is he with these assholes from overseas? I need to go. I need to find out. Should I have to? Yeah. I, I get it. But you wanted to check out these... These warehouses, correct? Specifically to see if we could find Ethan. But if we know where he might be, then... Cool. The thing... Would you let me come with... Yeah. The thing is, if you two go there and whatever dangerous people you talk about are there, then, you know, we're screwed. I, I think, because things are. Things are just piling up on each other. I might, I suggest that me and Wendy take care of this exorcism. The two of you figure out how to get that. Actually, no. Um, me and Wendy try to get Ted to get that violin. And hopefully we can, uh, you know, convince Natalie to help. And maybe the two of you can figure out this exorcism that we need to do. Well, we need Wendy for the exorcism to deal with whatever's going on with the salt shakers. So I don't think we should split up for that. It's fair. But Jet, I understand. I understand that it could be dangerous, but I, I can't just not see for myself and I have backup it we won't it won't be a whole thing we'll just go see if he's there and if he's alone we'll talk and if he's not we won't I don't I don't distrust that that's what you're gonna do if they're as dangerous as Viridian says then I'm I'm looking at this at, with a cool head because it's I'm a third person. I'm looking into this thing. And you're a little bit too close and I understand. I just don't want the two of you running into whatever danger it is. Cuz let's be honest, me and Wendy we can only do so much. More powerful than you think. Both of you. Fine, I'll wait. But after the exorcism, I'm going. Of course. Let's let's try to get more information as to who's in that building first. Okay, but quickly. I can <sighs> send people. I have people I can send. 
uh, and Viridian's gonna text Cal um, a really quick message, essentially um, telling Cal to gather some of Viridian's security forces, because that is something that I have within my resources. Um, and I think this is a conversation that uh, Cal and I have at some point, Nebulous, where um, Viridian is basically just going to ask Cal to send these people to essentially stake this place out and just see like how many people are there, who they might be. The whole like, you know, sitting in the car, taking pictures, uh, kind of is, stealth. Is Cal going on site? Like, is Cal joining them at all? Cal can, um, but I think Viridian has people who can do that, and like, Cal would just be the person who tells them what to do. Okay, that is your call specifically, so Cal won't go unless yeah you tell her to. Yeah, I think I think um, I think Viridian needs Cal on the the, the violin thing. <laughs> Got it. It might also be good to talk to Chosera. I can go that pretending it's for a case. The super uh, general superintendent. Hmm. One of the people, the person supposedly talking to Ethan in the documents. I can go pretending that it's for a case. Figure out what she knows. Because that's worked so well for you the past couple times. I won't kill her. Are you sure? I won't hurt her. Yes. That's what I mean. I'm sure. I'd feel better if I came with you. You can, it'll just look a little weird because you don't work at the firm and... I, and Cerise looks around at Jet and Wendy and like is a little bit uncomfortable but feels like this needs to be said. <sighs> Eddie happened because I was hurt. And you, not you, but you made it better. At least it felt better. And that's the only reason that that happened. But now after we talked, after we talked, that won't happen again. The beast is strong, Ceres. You know I've told you this. If this one temptation, this one piece that the beast inside you has tempted you with in the past, if that is gone, they will find something else to pull at. You nothing else that, will right? be... Nothing else will be strong enough. You don't know that. Give me a chance to show you. Very well. I think Fridian has half a mind to consider sending Cal with Cerise, posing as, uh, like, Cerise's assistant. Um, but I think knowing the two of them, they don't really get along much at all. Ops not to suggest that. I won't disappoint you, Sajang Nim. So, oh, what so. is happening? What is the next course of action for either of us? Yes. I think 
Cerise is going to talk to the chief inspector, big, big kahuna, CSR or whatever the initials were. Uh, Cal is working on the violin. I don't know what Viridian's doing. And Jet and Wendy are doing what again? I thought we were going to plan for the exorcism. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, the exorcism. I also think that while all of this is happening and we're talking about Ethan and we're talking about all this stuff, Wendy is texting Ted to be like, hey, you mentioned something about a violin. Don't worry about the door. It's fine for now. Um, but I didn't know if you had more information on that. Ted says, I'm literally fixing it right now. Okay. What do you mean, you oh, don't worry about it? it? No, it's okay. Keep it. fixing it. Just keep fixing it. It's fine. <laughs> Just the violin. It was intercepted. Um, just cargo that was left behind or something throughout the exchange process. Okay, what if I told you that I might know whose violin that is? Are you calling or texting? I'm texting. Oh, okay. Um, Ted starts calling. Oh, fuck. Uh, uh, so Wendy's going to, like, get up and, like, kind of excuse herself from the room and kind of, like, go answer, I guess. Be like, why are you calling me? I thought that's not what we do. We don't call each other, like. Are you fucking kidding me? Do you need me to get a, a, a contraband violin? Okay, yeah, I guess that was bad the way I worded it. Um, I was just, you don't have to get it. I was just curious if maybe I might know the person that whose who's violin it was and maybe I might know the, how that we should give it back to them. Oh, God. And Ted and I both will be flipping through some information, ATM. You know, I don't remember. <laughs> but as soon as I find it, I will give it to you. Okay. That sounds wonderful. This is so weird, Wendy. What is going on? I know. I am sorry. I mean, we haven't been through it before. I just, there's things happening. And the less you know, the better. Although, that's still yet to be seen, since you did give her my number without asking me first. That's okay, I guess. Um, so you just keep fixing the door, and when you think about a way maybe that I could get access to that violin, perhaps, maybe, um, that just let me know. Uh, I'm a text away, and um, yeah. That was... Um... It shouldn't be too difficult for you i'm pretty sure mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um yeah yeah i might be able to get you like a nice reward maybe perhaps don't maybe? don't don't okay. even worry okay. about it i'm getting your security deposit back uh, of course you are mm -hmm. okay um and you said you wanted to know who it came from or who is it heading to because i know who it's heading to or the intended person you do who's it who's it heading to um weirdly this like subsidiary warehouse to song international subsidiary warehouse interesting just like a random um yeah yeah, okay. That makes no sense whatsoever. That's fine. Um, Like, that's who it's going to now? Or that's who it was going to? It's who, what... it's who it was supposed to go to. It was supposed to go to. And so we're not going to... We're now not giving them 
the violin, even though we know that's where it should go. Wendy, you, you're going to have to figure out how to get it. I cannot be the person. Okay, fine. Where are they keeping it? In the post exchange, uh, the the like back storage stuff. Okay. Is my ID card still good, or do I need to make a new one? I'm pretty sure it's still good. All right, I just wanted to make sure you guys didn't change anything while I wasn't looking. You might need a uh, you might need a new uniform though. Okay, new uniform. Got it. All right. I'll figure it. Yeah, it'll be fine. Okay, cool. Thanks, Ted. Um, good luck fixing the door. Have let me know if you need anything. I'll be in touch. Okay, and she just like hangs up and goes back to the group and like sits down and just kind of waits for everybody to like finish their conversations. And it's like so they know the violin was going to you, Viridian. And uh, now yeah. it's at the PX, so we have to infiltrate the base to get it. When you say we, do you mean we? I don't I, think I should. Be I don't think I mean you. you. No, I don't think I mean you. But I think I can get us an FID cards that me and Jet maybe can go. Um, Cerise, I think you have a little too much of a reputation, perhaps? Uh, I would fight you on that, but you're right. So, I don't, yeah, probably not good. Um, if you can get us access to the uniform store, though, maybe, or something, I do need some uniforms, maybe? Someone can get that for me? Hey, uniforms Anything. for... The military, the American one. They their uniforms have changed since I've um, been around. So, if we want to get in and get that violin, we're gonna need that. And then Jet, I can make you an ID card. That'll be no problem. Um, and then we'll just have to go in and sneak our way into the back and get it out of the stock room. If you need any money for the uniforms or whatever, I can cover it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Don't um, worry about it. Okay. I'm a little worried that they knew the violin was going to you. Worries me a little bit. Um, but no violin? No problem? Right? Maybe? Hopefully they won't ask enough questions. It is a highly sought after piece of art. Anyone could have stolen it. Anyone looking to pawn it. Mm. Okay. It was very it's hard good. to find. And Vernian says that looking at Jet. <laughs> it's very, very difficult to find it. Your friend has high taste. They don't really know that they're going to get it. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, this whole plan sounds fine and dandy. Would it be easier if I could just do it in the morning? Like oh. go get the violin in the morning? Yeah, something happened. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think I can. I don't have to. You're a I, walker now. Mm, yeah. How did that happen? What do you... Long, long story, and... Let's just Make say we... Short. Let's just say we can thank Kevin for it. Guess you got some information out of him after all. Yeah. Uh, hmm, unfortunate. None of the people that I kill have ever given me anything cool. That's because Kevin was kindred. 
You can just go out during the day now? I used to be able to do it, but it, it, it hurt still. But now I feel a little weaker. But that's it. Then let's take advantage. Go during the day. It's less suspicious. Yeah, I can probably get you an ID card by morning. Yeah. All right, then. Wendy. I guess we have a plan. You get a text back from Ted. It was... The person sending it, well, the entire cargo is from like a greater source, but the specific uh, person sending over the violin, like singularly the violin, was a person named a music curator, instrument curator rather, named Taylor Wickham. Thanks, Ted. Ted, text again. Does, is that name familiar to you at all? Slightly, but it's not ringing a bell. Like, maybe I've heard it before, but I can't place what it's from. Ted doesn't text back. With plans being made. Unless there's anything else, any other conversations that want to be had or said. I think this is a good place to round out our episode seven. So I do want to say that Wendy... We'll kind of like half ignore what Ted has to say. And then um, before we wrap wrap, like ask Viridian if she wants to see her workshop. And like really what she means is that do you want to go back to my apartment and help me with these fake IDs and then we can go handle this exorcism stuff. Do the IDs have to happen at your apartment? I mean, if you want, I can I can just text you when I'm done with that part, and we can do the other part. Given that Ted is apparently looking into me, perhaps I shouldn't go back. But once you are done, I can pick you up. Okay. And then we can do the exorcism together oh man how cool it'd be if we got to see key again that would be cool when like wendy's just oblivious to everything that had happened outside of fox lady boobs we're right there <laughs> i would prefer if we don't unless we need to the fey are mischievous sure. very true you're right you're so smart thank you Anybody else? Um, uh, I'm gonna actually call Ray. Okay. She picks up. So, no answer. What about? the boy did you know about it did I know about him existing did you know what he was doing why he was in that church did he sell me out I I knew he was one 
of us. But he had slipped through the system or something. I had no fucking clue where he was this whole time. Or if he was even remotely religious or anything like that. If he did something to hurt you, I have no... No idea. Hey, I respect you and I trusted you. If we want to keep doing this, if you want my help to get rid of all of the obstacles in your way to cut the bullshit and tell me everything you know. Trust me, you don't want an enemy of me right now. I'm not exactly up for a kid to be talking to his elders this way. And I appreciate the help. But you can find some other places to find answers, can't you? And then she hangs up. Noted. Hey, thanks, Raid. We are also about to end. <laughs> uh, if everybody is good for now. Uh, my name is Josephine. I have been your storyteller for tonight. I am at Scary Dog Friend. Uh, follow my Twitter. You can find all of the other projects that I am on, including uh, every Friday until the 20th. Um, Undying Corruption, uh, a three shot with Stella Luna, who is also lovely and in the chat. Uh, Youngles. Hi, I'm Youngles, aka Jen. Uh, I go by she, they pronouns, and I play Wendy, who also goes by she, they pronouns, and um, a, a little bit of a crush, but more so of like a, oh my gosh, kind of feel. Let's see. Um, but <laughs> but uh, you can find me at Jen Geeky on Twitter. I have lots of projects coming up, and I don't want to forget any or, you know, say the wrong things in the wrong times and stuff. So follow me on there to find all of the cool things I'm doing this year. And I will pass that off to Humna. Hi, hello. My name is Humna. I use any and all pronouns, and I am a TTRPG performer. Uh, today, I have been Cerise Shaheen, who uses they them pronouns, who may who may have brought the Second Inquisition to our doorstep. Um, oops. Yeah. It turns out killing cops all oh, left and right does that. Uh, <laughs> I, like I mentioned, I'm a tabletop performer. You can find me on Twitter at hshahid underscore, where I talk about all of the different projects that I'm a part of. I'm on a lot of different APs, so if you want to know where I am at any given point in time, Twitter's the best place to find me. Um, the one that's coming up next is on Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time over on VO underscore Cologne's channel. Um, I will be playing the Mythic Initiative, which is a Monster of the Week campaign where we... Are the monsters every week um it is going to be the part one of our two-part finale on thursday for season one so that's it's gonna be a lot uh you should definitely come check it out there's gonna be so much will happen oh, so many things will happen um yeah 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 and with that i'm gonna pass it over to jay Hi everyone, my name is Jay, I use they, them, and today I played Viridian Song, who is Cerise's sire and Ventru and Soleil. Uh, I am on Twitter at NalaWu and at NalaDraws if you'd like to see my artwork. I am a professional illustrator and art director working full-time in tabletop RPGs. Besides art, I also do voice acting, sensitivity reading, cultural consulting, 
actual play performance like this and uh, lots of other fun stuff. Um, I want to give a shout out to um, All the Witches, which is an original uh, game system and setting. Uh, that is, uh, the preview for Kickstarter is up now, so if you'd like to give that a follow when the project launches, that would be super cool. Uh, if you search All the Witches on Twitter, it should come up. Uh, but I will be art directing for that um, project and I'm so excited for it because I'm working with our cover artist right now and oh, it's so good. It's so good. I cannot wait to show you all the fun stuff that we are cooking up there. Um, as far as other projects, the best place to keep up with all of that is on my Twitter at Nala Wu. Uh, and again, Nala Draws. Um, on any other social media I might have that includes TikTok and Hive and all the other places. God knows what's happening right now. Um, but that, that is me. Um, I'm gonna pass it over to Fabs, our lovely producer and player. Howdy, howdy. Uh, this has been Fabs. Uh, I produce, um, I GM, I play, uh, you can find me here ongoing crit rpg and soon enough in the spring you can find me at uh badhouse rpg which uh we will have uh, a bunch of new things ever wanted to see uh may a mage game in the vein of uh v5 yeah i hacked it took me three days but i did it um but yeah uh check us out there um you can find me at rockets and pens um for my comic stuff and my art stuff um, I did the art for here. Um, and yeah, uh, I have, uh, nothing, uh, much, uh, going crit RPG. We're going to have, uh, three, uh, three shows that we're going to be casting for. So look out, uh, on Twitter for that. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I'm going to leave it to Joe to deliver the final word. Follow bad horse, bad, bad horse, follow bad house RPG. Goodbye. <laughs> Great job. Bye. <laughs>